So time and time again, we absolutely see incredible controller players dominating in Fortnite tournaments and events. And it's starting to get out of hand, to be actually real, all right? Seeing how well controller players are performing, and it's due to many, many things, all right? With all the updates that have come out since the first launch of the game, Fortnite has become a game that is easily one of the most controller-friendly games when it comes to cross-platform. Controller players have the luxury of being able to use aim assist, which is a much wanted game aspect from keyboard and mouse players. At the same time, controller players also have a great variety in their button layouts as paddle. But after all of this, there is one major thing that truly makes controller players so dominant when it comes to competitive play. You guys want to know? And my friends, ladies and gentlemen, that is their aim. Some of the best and most consistent controller players in the entire world are also the same ones that don't miss a single shot. <laughs> Duh. Like, how many times have you been in a fight against a person that no matter what you do or whatever trick you want to pull off, they still hit every shot and end up winning the fight? In this video today, we're going to be looking at some of the best controller players in the world, and we're going to be breaking down and teaching you guys exactly how to aim just like them. Who wants to do that? Now, before we dive into this amazing video, if you want to learn how to play exactly like the pros play, you got to check out ProGuys.com, where we have the best coaches in the entire world. Sign up for our membership today and get exclusive access to master courses by players like Benji and Mongrel. If you want to go more in depth and explore all the different aspects of competitive gameplay that you need to know in order to succeed, you got to head on over to ProGuide's website and be sure to sign up and start improving rapidly today. What's going on, guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I am back. I want to let you know if you want to be great at anything, who wants to be great? Like, who wants to be great in this game and in life? Come on, raise your hand. Let me see it. Okay, it's a few of you guys. It takes work. Being great takes sacrifice. Being great takes commitment. And you got to have all three, all right? You can do it, but you have to be willing to sweat, man. You got to be willing to bleed for it. You got to be willing to give your heart for it, man. And because that's what all the greatness, all the great people we look at, you know, it all took sacrifice to get there. It all took time. It took commitment. And so if you want to be great, make the commitment, man. Go all in with all of your heart, all right? Connect with me on my new Insta, all right? At Your Motivation Guy. Once again, at Your Motivation Guy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. Everybody around the world, it's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. Come on, y'all need to scream this out with me. It's that bunch of crunch, and let's get this going. All right, so one of the most underrated and talked about tricks on controller aiming is reticle tightening. This is also known as LT spamming, aka left trigger spamming. LT spamming has always been seen like as something very negative and there's been a lot of negative talks around it. However, it's not actually possible to do with advanced sensitivities. So the only way someone to LT spam the way they would have months ago before the introduction of advanced aiming would be to turn off legacy aiming, which is actually not what many pro controller players play on. So how do they quote unquote LT spam? All right, so well to start. All right, let's go over what LT spamming is and what it actually does. So LT spamming on Legacy does two things. You ready? First, it allows you to actually lock into your target, meaning that, you know, you're going to be getting an easy aim tracker and all you have to do is keep clicking that button. The second thing it does, and more importantly, is that it tightens your reticle and decreases bloom. The second option still applies to every advanced sensitivity, not even whether you're on controller, PC, or mobile. ADSing in Fortnite makes the weapon reticle much smaller, essentially decreasing the bloom on all weapons, giving you an easy tactic way to dominate your opponents in gunfights. When it comes to doing this, guys, it works very effectively for all platforms, all right, but most effectively for controller players. This is because the added aim assist that slightly helps you track your opponents will help guide your shortened reticle accurately. So here's how you can improve your aim in minutes, just by learning this one simple trick. Start by loading up a game and practicing pressing your left trigger button slightly before actually shooting. You want to time this perfectly so that when you're shooting at the very peak of your reticles tightening, this will maximize the accuracy and lessen the bloom as much as possible. Next up, you're going to want to practice tracking your opponents and actually taking in your reticle size in real time in order to maximize the effectiveness. What we mean by this is that you're going to want to take into consideration the size of your reticle as you're fighting your opponent. All right, so you got to pay attention to that little crosshair in the middle of the screen and allow it to slightly get smaller before taking each shot. We recommend using the burst AR and we'll get into that in just a few moments. But for now, you should know that timing your shots is much more important than getting as many shots as possible out. Because, you know, many people tend to focus on spamming their weapons and shooting it as much as possible. All good. You know, when they really have to focus, though, on is landing those critical headshots and actually hitting their target. 
Finally, guys, for Bloom, we want to discuss using movement to aim and to reduce reticle size, right? Lessening your movement in Fortnite also tightens your reticle greatly. This can be anything from standing in one place to not jumping and even crouching. Standing without any movements plus crouching is going to give you guys the biggest advantage in terms of Bloom size, all right? And although we just said that not having movement while shooting is the best, for some strange reason though, repeatedly spamming your crouch button while shooting actually helps you land your shots much more often. This is just hard to see when you're looking at the reticle, but it's significantly easier to see when you're actually shooting an opponent in real time. You're gonna notice insane increases in the amount of shots you land. Fortnite mechanics can oftentimes be a little weird. They'll contradict themselves and act in unexpected ways, which is why it's super important that you guys keep coming back and checking out our videos to stay informed on some of the best ways that you could just improve and get an advantage over other players. Okay, so to end this section, let's take a look at a clip and analyze all the different things we just talked about in a pro controller player's gameplay. In this clip, all right, we see Unknown Army, possibly one of the best competitive players of all time, and definitely the top competitive controller player the last few months, okay? He's taking on an opponent from medium range. Unknown starts this encounter by taking some accurate and timely shots at his opponent from behind. As we mentioned before, we can see that Unknown is actually timing his shots perfectly. He's waiting just a few seconds between some of the shots and then shooting again. So this allows his bloom to reduce and gives him great accuracy. Next up, we see him utilize a trick with the rocket launcher that we talked about in one of our recent videos. Unknown launches a rocket at the opponent's box and waits for just the right time to shoot as he starts firing shots directly while the RPG hits. He does this because he's timing his shots perfectly so that his first few shots that are going to most likely go through the opponent's wall are very, very accurate and more likely to hit. And sure enough, we see that Unknown earns the damage mark on the opponent and gets an easy 33. Directly after this smart move, Unknown pushes up on his opponent knowing that he's going to be fairly weak. He then switches to a shotgun since he's getting towards close range and he almost instantly takes the shot as soon as he sees it. Alright, so you gotta pay attention to how he quickly ADSs and allows for his shotgun reticle to tighten before taking the shot. In this clip, all right, we can see almost every aspect of Bloom reducing being used, including movement, as a known crouch and he stopped moving his character every single time he fired shots with AR. We can also see something very intelligent that we're going to be talking about in this next section. Pre-firing is a major necessity to having good controller aim. The fact of the matter is this, that controller players don't have the ability to have good aim when it comes to fast flick plays, right? Mainly when being compared to PC players. This means that controller players have to rely on smooth aiming and smart aim placement to make up for this shortcoming. The way most controller pros do this is by pre-aiming. Pre-aiming, guys, is the process in which a player very carefully analyzes their opponent and places their reticle in an area where they have concluded that their opponent will soon cross. Pre-firing is great for around the corner scenarios or really just build fights in general. All right, so let's get more into this complex trick and teach you guys the ins and outs of pre-firing. You guys ready? Pre-aiming requires a few different skills. So what are these skills? Show me, tell me. Well, first up, we have game IQ, you know, which plays a really huge role in pre-aiming, right? You have to be good at knowing where your opponents are going to be, and you need to be able to figure it out very, very quick. Most of the time, you know, you're going to find yourself in build fights where the winner of the fight will end up being the person who correctly guessed the future approximate location of their opponent. For example, all right, so let's just say that your opponent is sitting in a box, all right? Now imagine with me for a while, let's take a journey, that the opponent decides to run out of the box or make an edit play. So by predicting which way they're going to run or where they're going to open up the wall, you've already now have your aim in that general area. You're ready to fire now, right? You're not gonna have to flick your shot as much or maybe not even at all, and you're gonna be much more accurate in the long run. So to show you guys what we mean, all right, let's take a look at another clip by Unknown Army right here, and I mean right here, to see how we use his pre-aiming to dominate his opponents. Y'all ready? Let's do it. All right, look at this. Let's take a look at this clip of Unknown in a box fight scenario against another opponent. As soon as Unknown shoots out the opponent's wall and he takes it, Unknown does what anyone would do, and he edits the wall to attempt to get to his opponent and take a shot. But you gotta pay close attention to what you're really about to see. Did you see that? How about now? What we want you to see is that he actually edits in a very specific way that is in accordance with his pre-aiming. All right, you gotta look how he circles his edit in a way that brings his aim back to his opponent's head when he confirms the edit. This sets it up, all right, so that his aim is actually already on the opponent once he edits. Many players make the mistake of just trying to make the quick edits and they end up being sloppy and really just harm to aim with. 
This is a mistake that can easily be corrected by just forward thinking and just smarter maneuvering such as, you know, in your edit plays. Taking advantage of third person right hand peek and other tricks that involve making good pre-aiming. In the end, your skill in pre-aiming truly comes down to how much you play. <laughs> you gotta practice. You know, the more you practice it, it's just reality. The more you're gonna become better at it. And that's really anything, not only in this game, but also in life. If you want to really improve at pre-aiming and ultimately improve your accuracy, you gotta just make sure to focus, man. Be committed. Just make sure you're focusing and be committed. And you're gonna just see your skill level go to a whole nother level. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Hope you enjoyed the video. I want you to be inspired. I want you to be motivated, all right, to do great things, not only in this game, but also in life. You gotta keep going. Keep going, keep dreaming, keep believing. I want you to be happy. Don't be depressed, all right? Love life and love people. There's so much in you. There's greatness on the inside of you. So you gotta keep going. I believe in you, man. Connect with me on my new Insta at Your Motivation Guy. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Once again, comment down below what you guys thought and uh, what you like to see next because we really strive to bring you guys daily quality content. So do us a favor by liking this video, subscribe to the channel, and show ProGuys.com some love by using code ProGuys in the item shop. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.